Mama Cat. George? Hello, my fellow sniffers. My name is Marlene McCohen, and this is Cody, my African Grey, and we would like to welcome you to Parent Tip Tuesday. Now today, I think it's an African Grey kind of day. So we're gonna do something different today, and eventually I'll do this for all birds and all different kind of birds, but today we're going to talk about what it's like to own an African Grey. I thought this would be a great video because <laughs> Cody thinks it's really funny. It's so funny, he just wants to jump on my head. I thought this would be a great video today because although there's a lot to be educated on when you are looking into buying a parrot, sometimes you just need to know what it's like to own a certain type of bird. And of course, since it's the anniversary of George this week, well, kind of passed, but for me, it's still the anniversary of George. I thought we would talk about African greys. And also, yeah, you like that? I have my African grey nail polish, if you guys noticed. This is basically George, because he was all grey with one red feather, and then of course, I have a red pedicure for his red tail. So every year, I do something like that. Cody likes it. Right, Cody? Yeah, he always likes the red one. Which finger do you like? The red one? Yeah. Do you want a toy? All right. I'm just gonna talk to you guys and tell you from my experience what it's like to own both the African Greys that I have owned. The first thing you need to know about owning an African Grey is that, of course, it's a lot of work. They need constant attention. You guys have heard that so often about so many parrots. But of course, the bigger the parrot, the more attention they're going to need in different kinds of ways. So of course, even the littlest bird needs all of the attention you can give in the world. But bigger birds need like a more focused attention because they're more capable of destroying stuff, getting rambunctious. They have the ability to destroy things that little birds kind of aren't able to destroy. That's why some people call certain birds starter birds. Because experienced bird owners know that no matter what, if you get a larger parrot, they're going to be after everything you own to destroy. And it's not that you can train them not to do it. You can try, but most of the time you just gotta be more aware. You know, hey, I can't put my purse on the table. Hey, I can't leave my laptop open. All these things become a whole new world when you own a parrot. But let's talk about African greys. African greys are my favorite. They're my favorite birds in general. Of course, you guys know that like Picasso is my little favorite bird. But African greys match my personality so well. When you're looking into getting a parrot, you have to decide what kind of bird does match your personality because the truth is everyone's different. And the truth is also that if you've never had a bird before, this might be a very hard thing to know before you get one. All birds, especially large birds, will make you feel like you basically have a toddler. But African greys are kind of like having the intelligent child on the block. So for example, Jersey is 100% a toddler running around the house crying if she doesn't get what she wants, freaking out if somebody doesn't accept her advances. She's 100% like a two or three year old. And it's extremely cute and it's extremely funny. Cody is not a two year old in that way. An African Grey feels a little bit different. While Jersey feels like the cute little kid on the block that everyone wants to play with, Cody and my African Grey George felt more like the posh little kid on the block that would answer you rather than chase you, isn't really interested in you engaging with him 100% physically, but intellectually needs to be stimulated. So they're very different. Some people want a bird that they can cuddle all the time, like Jersey, you see how cute she is. And some people need a bird that can be with them observing, but not necessarily needing to be fondled. Like all birds, they insist on being in your presence. They wanna see you, they wanna know that you're there. If you're not in the same room, they're going to scream, just like any other bird would. With African greys, I always felt like George could be nearby me, but not necessarily on me. 
he was able to be kind of like a sidekick. He also didn't want me petting him and cuddling him all the time because that's not really something that African greys are into. Can you give them head scratches? Sure. Have you seen me cuddle Cody? Yes. But that's not something you should expect out of your African grey if you get one. Believe me, not all of them are cuddly. In fact, it's pretty rare. They just have different feathers than cockatoos and cockatoos really want you to engage with them with that physical love and African greys don't. For me personally, that works great because sometimes it's hard for me to be cuddling a bird all day. We will discuss how to prevent your bird from wanting to cuddle all day because it's very important that you're able to keep your bird active and engaged with toys and foraging. As you can see, Cody's on my shoulder. He's what I call a shoulder bird, meaning that he enjoys being on my shoulder. My African Grey George did not like being on my shoulder. He would have much rather been right here on the stand of this chair, just sitting next to me. And I really like that. So in this way, Cody is a really different bird. Cody gets a lot of anxiety if he's not right here on me. I think that has something to do with the true story of Cody. If you guys watch that video, even if I am in Cody's sight, he flies to me every second. I can put him down, then I walk two steps, he flies to me. I walk somewhere else, he flies to me. Cody lands on me all day. Probably about 70 times a day does Cody fly to me in such a panic as if I'm going to leave and go somewhere. In fact, I'll tell you something funny about that. In light of the recent hurricane, my sister told me that my brother is probably going to go work for FEMA, which is the disaster relief. And then she mentioned that his girlfriend, Sio, may have signed up for it. And I said to myself, oh, maybe I should do it. And my sister said, um, yeah, I don't know. And I thought she was thinking like, cause you know, there might be any kind of like physical labor or something to do. She goes, you can do it, but you're gonna have to take Cody. African greys are extremely sensitive. They're very sensitive emotionally because they're so intellectual. African greys are one of the most emotional parrot companions that you can have. So you always have to be aware before getting a parrot or an African gray that there's a lot of emotions to deal with. So if you're not someone that enjoys dealing with emotions of human beings on a regular basis, it's even harder to deal with a parrot's emotions because they can't just say to you what is bothering them. So what is it like living with a bird that can talk to you? It's amazing. For me, this is one of my favorite things about African greys, but I must tell you, not all African greys talk. You may get a bird that doesn't talk. That's why you can never ever get a bird for its talking abilities or expect it to talk because you're doing a huge disservice to the parrots. And you have to make sure that just like your dog doesn't talk to you, but he communicates, that you're well aware that you may get a parrot that communicates but does not talk. So that's very important. But as far as how much noise a bird makes, like an African Grey all day, you're looking at a lot of talk, chatter, beeping, noises, alarms. Somebody commented on one of my videos that the video was great, but the alarm in the background was a little stressful. There was no alarm, that was the bird. That was my bird pretending to be kind of like a smoke detector. Maybe the comment was a joke, but <laughs> either way, that's what it was. So you have to be well prepared for the fact that you will be hearing noise all day long. Different kinds of noises. Are they entertaining? Yes, but are they always entertaining? What if you need some peace and quiet? What do you do? That's when you have to have your bird next to you because that's probably the only guaranteed way to keep him quiet or give him such great foraging toys and keep him as busy as you possibly can, engaged and entertained all of the time. So it can be a lot of work. Here are some examples of what you might hear during the day with an African Grey. Microwaves beeping, phone messages coming in, computers turning on, phones ringing, phone conversations with the bird. The dogs barking, any beeping that the bird may have heard outside, the door opening, the door creaking, an alarm ringing, 
any single process that you go through that the bird has seen. So George was able to do my morning routine. For example, I would put on my makeup and every click of every bottle or spray or any single thing that I used on my face, he knew the exact sound of closing the top, opening the other bottle, pouring it, and he would go through it exactly at the same time as I did. There's so many noises that a human could never ever create that just sound so real and they are real, that your African Grey will be able to imitate. It may trip you out a lot. You may think somebody is beeping or turning on a button or the oven just went on or... I don't know if ovens make noises, honestly. <laughs> That's my own fault. The microwave, every single noise you can think of, the bird can make. You spraying, you watering things, the noise of water, the noise of waterfalls. These are just things that the bird hears, anything on TV. I told you guys about the time my bird did the exorcism in my house. That wasn't pleasant when it was dark at night. So any little thing that they have heard, if they're interested in it, they can absolutely recreate. So those are some of the noises you will be hearing all day long when you own an African Grey. Do they have quiet time? Yes, there's many moments when the bird doesn't say, talk, or do anything, but there's a lot of moments when it's kind of sporadic, so things may be quiet and then suddenly your bird makes some beeping noise. And sometimes it's a really good warning. African greys can be great to let you know what it is you're missing from your routine. Maybe that's more specific to me because I tend to be really obsessive compulsive so the bird learns quickly what it is that I should be doing. I have gotten signs from my bird that it's time to clean the glass table because the bird is making the spray bottle noise. These are the things the birds do and they identify when it's going to happen. So the bird's like, hmm, we put a lot of crumbs on this table. Looks like it's time to hear that noise. So yeah, I'm telling you a lot of the fun stuff about owning an African Grey because I want you guys to know what it really is like in daily life. They're also very routine. I've talked about routine before. But greys are prone to plucking, just like cockatoos are. So you want to make sure that you're giving them a really good routine that they're comfortable with and not changing things up too much. It can happen that your bird can start plucking and you have to solve the mystery. So if you're not generally good at solving mysteries without someone flat out telling you what's wrong, maybe these aren't the birds for you. Your bird could start plucking and it could be because you're waking him up an hour later or an hour earlier or putting him to bed at the wrong time. You have to be able to analyze what is different in your household now. There could be a new piece of furniture that you put near his cage and he doesn't like it. These are all things that you have to consider before getting a bird. Do you really want a bird to be able to rule your house? Because that's really what it feels like, you know? We become slaves to our birds in a way. Not to say that I don't have some sort of control. Come here, baby. Come here, back here. Good bird. Not to say that I don't have some control over the birds, of course. You know, I'm able to make a schedule for myself and for the birds. But a lot of my time goes into keeping the birds happy. I can't get out of the house on a decent time. It takes me a while. I want to make sure that they've had their breakfast, that they've had their lunch, or that they're put to sleep, or woken up, or had some good time with me before I leave. When I come back, my priority can't be to go to anything else except the birds. They take things personally. We can't take things personally. We're not allowed to take our birds personally and behave differently towards them. That's the one thing I noticed about African Greys. African Greys can be different difficult when you're in a relationship because they often are one person birds. Of course, through socialization, you can train your African Grey to be more cordial with people, but you cannot force your African Grey to like somebody. 
that person has to want to win over the African Grey and has to really take the time and have the patience to do it. So sometimes I hear about people who take their Grey personally, meaning that the bird is their girlfriend's bird or boyfriend's bird and the bird pushes them away and says, don't come to me or don't talk to me or all sorts of things and those things sound so real, you feel like a human is telling you. So you're like, fine, okay. The bird doesn't like me, so I don't like the bird. That's what happens, guys. These birds feel so human that sometimes people take them personally. Okay, baby, you can't do that. You have got to treat the bird like this is a little soul that you are determined to convince that you mean no harm and you want to be its friend. So that's something I would say to any of you who have a significant other with an African Grey or any other parrot that doesn't like you. It's your job to put all of that effort in. And when I say that it could take a day or it could take a year, I mean it. I've had some comments on one of my videos where I say don't take it personally. I was trying to explain that it could take a year or so, so be patient. Someone commented, my gray only took a day or my parrot only took a day. And I'm like, yeah, that's possible too. But what's more important is to let the people know that even if it doesn't take a week or two weeks or a month, it's always still possible. You just need a lot of patience and you're gonna have to put in that effort. Right, baby? One of my favorite things that Cody does and also George did is laugh at appropriate jokes. It's so amazing. It's almost like maybe we give off a vibe before that they know that we're going to laugh. And sometimes it's just like they're geniuses. They understand everything that's going on. And that can be a real argument breaker in the house if there's an argument going on. You can tell that the birds will take one side or start getting excited too. Cockatoos will do that a lot. Another thing you should probably know about owning an African Grey Back on the subject of cuddling, let me show you. See, he's kind of nippy. We know that he loves me and he's obsessed with me. You have to be prepared for that. Be prepared to get bit. Not all birds bite, but a lot of birds bite every once in a while and it'll come out of nowhere. And usually you could figure out what you did wrong, but you have to be prepared to have a bird bite. So that's another reason people talk about starter birds, starting with small birds. You go out and you get a macaw and it's the sweetest thing and then it goes through its hormonal stages and that big beak bites you. What happens there? That's why there's research and that's why, yeah baby, and that's why we have to get used to things. Cody doesn't want to step up right now. He's afraid of where I was going to put him. So he attempts to bite, right Cody? This actually doesn't hurt. He's not really biting, but he could. And that's something you need to be prepared for. You also need to be very intuitive when you own a parrot. You have to know, just like they know about you, what they're going to do next. Like, is he going to bite right now? Is he going to push me away? I know, but for the purpose of showing you guys, I'm not afraid to let you see what it's like. So for example, step up Cody. He's doing a good job of stepping up. If I do it wrong, oh, you're a good bird. If I do it wrong, he might try to bite my finger, right? I know that. So these are little things that you always have to know about owning an African gray. Now this is very hard for me to convey, but when I talk about African greys passionately and how intelligent they are, you all know no matter what bird you have, they're super, super intelligent. They're more intelligent than probably you even expected them to be. But owning a grey is like having a bird that's intuitive with your mind and what you're going to say. And that's what's very fascinating. Having a bird that knows when I'm going to laugh, knows when I'm going to cry, knows when I'm going to move a certain way. I used to breathe and go, and George used to go, all right, because he knew that's what I was going to say. And that kind of stimulation is very interesting and entertaining to me personally. I love that they're observing every single thing that I do. Now all parrots, especially African greys, need foraging toys. Why are we talking about foraging toys? Well, they have to keep busy. It's a really great idea to create foraging toys to hide your bird's food so they have to work to get it. 
Remember, in the wild, birds are busy all day long. They're looking for mates, they're digging for food, they're bringing food back, they're regurgitating for the babies, they're sitting on eggs. There's so many things that birds are busy doing all day long in the wild. So when we take a bird and cage it, they get really bored. As you can imagine, we're talking about birds that have learned to speak any language that you want. My African greys have learned to speak all of my other birds' languages, including English, which is pretty fascinating, right? So it's very important that we do not bore our birds. When you leave your bird in a cage, he has to be left with a lot of things to do. And in fact, when you feed your bird, it's a good idea to give him some work to do to feed him. That is what a foraging toy is. A foraging toy is a toy that has a mechanism of some sort. Maybe there's a dial that the bird has to turn and when he turns it, his nut comes out. Things that the bird has to figure out before he gets his food. But the toys don't have to have those kind of mechanisms. You can make foraging toys at home. You can actually take tubes and paper and things that the bird needs to chew and then suddenly he finds his nut. And those things keep birds really busy and really entertained because that's what they would do in the wild is go through branches and all sorts of different things to get their food. So we have to kind of figure out the best way to recreate the wild for them. Why are we talking about foraging toys? Because it's important to know that when you have an African Grey, you have to put a lot of work into keeping them busy. You make one foraging toy for a few nuts, do you know how quickly your bird can destroy it? So you also have the job of creating these things all the time for your birds. Your bird could eat a toy in two to three days. So how often do you have to replenish toys? Or if you enjoy making your own toys for your birds, as I do, I have a drawer just for beads and wood and all sorts of things that I can put together to make the bird toys. If you enjoy doing that, think about the time that goes into that versus the time it takes for them to destroy it. You're gonna be pretty busy. So these are some things you need to know before getting an African Grey. A lot about time. How much time do you have to spend with your bird every day? Well, for me personally, it's every moment that I can. I don't really sit at home and leave them caged. I can't do it. I have to find ways for them all to be engaged. Now you may just have one bird, so that could be a lot easier, and that's probably the best idea. But even with just Cody, Cody keeps me very busy. If I take Cody into the bathroom with me to put my makeup on and get ready for the day, most of the time I'm chasing him around. Oh no, 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 don't chew that, don't get that. I've moved everything that I can, but Cody can fly. So you have to be prepared for every single thing that you do, regular daily routines, to become a lot more difficult. Now although African Greys tend to be okay with being just next to you for a little while. Maybe you can give them a toy. Cody, he gets himself into things. He really does. For example, you guys have seen on my story time on my Instagram how Cody behaves. He likes to go into the drawers. He likes to play with things. He likes to get at all my makeup brushes, pull them out. So a lot of my time is spent saying, no, don't do that. Put that back. Let me get this. You know, he doesn't care. He wants to get the next thing that he can get. That adds a lot of time, but I'm not going to cage him up. I'm gonna do my best to put him in an entertaining spot and give him an entertaining toy or something to play with. I have boxes everywhere that I keep them with little things that I can give them to keep them entertained. And Cody really enjoys that, but still, they get bored. So every five minutes I have to give him something new. So I just wanted to give you the real deal on what it's like. They can be chill for a little while, but they can also be very rambunctious. Like. This bird climbs on my head about 40 times a day. When I'm walking, when I'm going to get some food, when I'm making myself tea, when I'm doing any normal task, Cody flies, lands on my head. Would you be able to deal with that? When I'm telling you, it sounds so cute and fun and oh my God, imagine a bird landing on my head. 
but what if you're just trying to get something done and you put him back and then he flies again and lands on your head? What if he has like attachment issues like Cody does? Cody's 100% an attached bird. And a lot of birds get like that. So that's something to consider. George was a little more confident about our relationship. He knew he was number one bird. He was happy sitting next to me, but not on me. And I really liked that about him. But as I said, if that story is true, this makes 100% sense. And you could get an African gray or any bird like this. I prefer African grays over cockatoos. I love cockatoos because they're so cute and so cuddly and I love cuddling Jersey. But you gotta be really careful with cockatoos and not getting them used to too much cuddling because they need to be engaged. So that is my perspective on owning an African Grey. All in all, it's a lot of fun. I love that bond intellectually that I have with Cody and the one I had with George. Do you see how he just went for my necklace? You know, your bird is gonna be the boss, so that's something to be well prepared for. But I really wanted to take you through a day with an African Grey and just let you know things that you could expect, things that are so much fun but also have their downfalls, and also things that you may not have ever thought of, and also put a light on them where you realize that things that sound fun may not be. It's a lot of commitment to own a bird. It's a lot of commitment to own an African Grey, just to keep them entertained, just to keep them happy, just to be the detective that figures out the mysteries of what is their problem. That's something that you're going to have to do for a lot of years. And again, you cannot get a bird and get bored of it. You cannot get a bird and assume that when it bites you, it just doesn't like you and that's it. That's wrong. It takes a lot of training. And on that note, I should tell you guys, if you know somebody that is an expert with birds or has a bird, maybe you should ask them to go with you to get a bird before you get yours because it's important that you bond with your bird and not just get one because you thought this was the one that you like the look of or you want to own. It's really important when you bring your bird into your home that you know this. A lot of people ask me for advice before getting a bird and I tell everyone the same thing. Thing. Love him like he's your family member. Include him in everything like he's your best friend. And respect him like he is your teacher. And then you and your bird will be very, very happy. Thank you guys so much for watching. Cody, do you want to say bye? Let's say bye, Cody. Bye! We really enjoyed this Parrot Tip Tuesday. Let me know if there's any specific birds you guys want to know about. Of course, I'll go through all of mine first. <laughs> but if you have a favorite of my birds, I'll do that video soon for you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please come join Parrot Station on Facebook. That's our members group and the community I have for me to see your birds. So come on and share them. And follow me on Instagram at Marlene McCohen for the daily life of these babies. You can watch them through my story time. Thank you so much. Bye.